if you're like me, and this was the first Elite Dangerous video that you saw, the idea of being able to get involved in a space battle like this. Oh yes. <laughs> Federation combat bond accepted, what the hell's all that about? Well, I was kind of late to the whole uh, interfactional fighting party in Elite Dangerous, but I did eventually figure out how it worked after, you know, as is usual for me, an awful lot of trial and error. Um, mostly error, not a lot of trial. And um, if this sort of thing gets your juices pumping and you want to get involved in this kind of space battle in Elite Dangerous, you absolutely can. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. In the galaxy of Elite Dangerous, you have three factions, two superpowers, the Federation and the Empire. And then a third kind of faction, the Independent Systems. I say kind of faction because they're not allied with each other. They're independent of the Empire, they're independent of the Federation, they're also independent of each other. And if it helps, think of it as kind of like a Cold War between America and the USSR during the 1950s, 60s and 70s. Two huge superpowers unwilling to take the risk of going directly to war with each other, but instead getting involved in low-intensity conflicts and supporting their chosen side against the side supported by the other. A bit like the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and so on and so on. And what's going on in Elite Dangerous is that in the Iranian system, where all the players start at the moment, there is currently a civil war being fought, with the government being backed by the Federation and the revolutionary Iranian People's Party being backed by the Empire. And as a player and a member of the Pilots' Federation, you can influence the outcome of the war, whether that's indirectly by taking bullet board missions to resupply one side or the other, or directly by getting stuck in and fighting. But in order to do that, the first thing that you're going to need to know is where the actual fighting is. So when you're staring at the Spaceport Services screen in Iran in Orbital, have a look over at the right-hand side of the screen at the local news. And there it is. Fighting continues at the following locations, Iran in 2, 4 and 6. So that's where you're going to need to go to look to find the fighting. Scan the news further and you'll find that the fighting isn't just limited to the Iranian system. There are conflict zones in neighbouring systems as well. So now you know where the actual conflict is, all you have to do is load the ship up, head over there and pick a side. Unfortunately it's not quite as straightforward as that. And this is the first real place I felt that the game doesn't do a very good job of showing you what to do. But that is why I do these videos. I make all the mistakes and end up looking like a noob so you guys don't have to. We're approaching the orbit of Iran in 4, which is where the news reports told us the conflicts were, and we've spotted a federal distress signal. That's what I'm closing in on at the moment. It's not just federal distress signals though, you will also, in orbit around these planets, spot low and high intensity conflict zones. If you're just starting off, you probably want to stay away from the high intensity conflict zone. If you're not supremely confident of your flying and dogfighting ability, or you're flying anything less than a well-equipped Viper, you probably want to stick to the Federal Distress Signals and the Low Intensity Conflict Zones. The High Intensity Conflict Zones are chock full of very well-equipped Cobras and Anacondas. Good luck taking one of those out in an Eagle or a Sidewinder. Get close enough to disengage my frameshift drive, arrive at the source of the Distress Signal, immediately deploy my weapons. I have no idea what to expect in here. This is quite literally the first time I've ever done this. Lots and lots of Federal fighters, lots and lots of unidentified Sidewinders, and that is the Federal Dreadnought that's sending out the Distress Signal. Just like in the intro video. Now, let me just get a lock and ID one of these Sidewinders. There we go. Oh, it's a player. Commander Knight. Okay. Let's try one of the other Sidewinders. Obviously the Federal fighters are on the side of the Dreadnought. Who are the Sidewinders? I just need to get one of these Sidewinders locked on and in front of me long enough to get a scan and ID him and he's an EPP Sidewinder. So that's the Iranian People's Party, the Communist Revolutionaries. They're the guys attacking the Dreadnought who's sending out the distress signal. So weapons free, work him over with the beam lasers at close range, destroys his shields, takes a huge chunk of his hull off. Seems simple enough, except I'm doing it wrong. And there's no feedback here that I'm doing it wrong, and the game will quite happily let you continue doing it wrong, um, with absolutely no indication of what it is that you should be doing. But, once again, this is why I do these videos, so I can get it wrong, so you guys don't have to. 
And this is an easy kill. I mean, it's just a Sidewinder. And I'm not the only one shooting at him. That's another Sidewinder, not a Federal fighter. That's actually our friend, Commander Knight. And, uh, bingo, there. I got one, and uh, that was kind of bizarre. There was a notification popped up in my info display, but it didn't tell me, here, have lots of money for killing an enemy Sidewinder. It just, well, kind of didn't say anything. I mean, it, it all seems pretty straightforward. I've responded to a federal distress signal. I've arrived at the location. I found a federal cruiser under attack by guerrillas. I have engaged and destroyed some of those enemy ships. What more do they want of me? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how much more obvious can I be? Well, it turns out that the Federation is apparently run by a bunch of bureaucrats, and unless you've filled out all the correct forms, well, it doesn't matter how many of their enemies you kill, you're not going to get any credit for it. But before we actually go through the correct process and show you how it works, as I'm lighting up this enemy Sidewinder, who's not officially an enemy, you see that other Sidewinder that just flashed in front of me at the last moment and accidentally took a hit from one of my beam lasers, only damaging his shields, didn't actually do any physical damage to his ship, there he goes again. Because I accidentally hit him while he's assisting me, and I'm being real careful now that I don't hit him again because he is in front of me, and these beam lasers do tend to wander a bit, he is now flagged as an enemy ship. So holding my fire there, and it's our friend Commander Knight, holding my fire to ensure that I didn't accidentally hit him again meant that he got credited for the kill. Not that it really matters because even though I don't realise it, I am not being credited for these kills myself yet, because I haven't filled out the correct paperwork. Commander Knight, well, I accidentally hit him. He literally flashed right in front of my guns, just as I was pulling a hard turn. And I took the time to ensure that I didn't accidentally hit him again, basically giving him the kill on that second Sidewinder. Watch this. See my shield display? I'm taking hits, and it's not from that Sidewinder in front of me. He's kilometers away. My shields are down. The hell's going on? Now my hull's taking hits. Well, you know, there's only one other enemy ship around, and it's our friend, the other player, Commander Knight. So, I'm not having this. I'm in a Cobra Mark III. But I don't want to just kill him. You know, I need to confirm that he is actually the one attacking me. So you can see I've locked onto him. If you look down at the radar display, there he is with the uh, brackets around his icon. And if you watch, as soon as, there, he started flashing white. That means he's firing at me. So I've confirmed that he is actually attacking me. Okay, fair enough. Now, this is where you're going to see me actually using my power systems properly for the first time. Full power to the engines. He might just be in the Sidewinder, and I'm in a Mark III Cobra, but my shields are down. He's in a much more manoeuvrable craft. Right now, he's got all the advantages. With four pips of power to the engines, your afterburner recharges so quickly, you can basically run the Mark III Cobra on full afterburner all the time. And with that kind of speed, I'm doing over 400, he's never going to catch me. Divert as much power as I can spare to the systems to get my shields back up. I don't need to put any power in my weapons. I'm not shooting at anybody, so I can safely divert as much power as I need from the weapons to the systems and the engines to get the distance separated from the Sidewinder on my tail, get my shields back up to full strength, and then turn around and show this guy who's boss. If you think of the Sidewinder as being the Mitsubishi Zero of uh, Elite, and the Cobra as being an F7 Corsair, you're not too far short of the mark. This is a very, very powerful, multi-purpose ship. I'm never going to beat a Sidewinder in a turning fight, so I'm not going to get into a turning fight with him. I'm going to use my superior power, the fact that I can take more of a beating than he can, now that my shields are fully recharged, and I can dish out a hell of a lot more damage than he can with these two very expensive beam lasers. There go his shields, he's taken hull damage. Don't try to get involved in a turning fight with him. Kick in those afterburners. Open the distance and just repeat the whole process. With your superior speed and power, you can dictate the terms of the engagement. He's going to target one of his subsystems. Going to go for his power plant. He's getting his shields back up, but it doesn't take many hits with these beam lasers to take his shields back down. Two pips of power to my systems. He did some damage to my shield. He took about a third of them down. Shields are back up. Repeat the process. 
an extra pip of power on my weapon so I can continue firing the beam lasers once they lock on. He's scoring hits on my shields, but the shields can take it. All that lovely hull damage. Slow down, optimum turn speed, and I've managed to get on his tail. What I should be doing here is taking power away from the systems, diverting them to the engines so I can stay on him because I'm behind him. He's not shooting at me. And I do eventually figure it out. <laughs> more power into the weapons so I can keep firing these beam lasers. Divert more power to the engines so I can stay on him. A little bit too much. Use the afterburners there. Didn't really need to. But he's in all kinds of trouble. I think he's finally figured out that <laughs> I mean, it takes balls of steel or a special kind of stupid, to attack a Cobra Mark III in a Sidewinder. And initially, oh, hello, he's trying to get out of here. Frame shift charge detected. Now that's good and bad, because he's too close to me to be able to make a clean jump. The mass of my ship, I'm flying a 400 ton ship here, is going to inhibit his frame shift drive, which means it's going to take him forever, providing I stay close enough to him for him to jump out. Plus, He's not shooting at me. You can't do a frame shift drive with your weapon hard points deployed. You have to retract your weapons before you can initiate the jump. So this is just a turkey shoot at this point. He's desperately trying to evade, but gimbal tracking weapons at this kind of range don't miss. Well, they don't miss much. His hull is all but gone. He's deployed his hard points. He's cancelled the jump. He knows he's not going to make it. Oh, my weapons are overheating. Come on, he's turned around. We've got him. Target destroyed. Hmm. Once again, I didn't make any money out of it. Commander Knight, by the way, if you're watching this video, no hard feelings, but, you know, you attacked me. <laughs> I was just defending myself. So, it's possible that he had actually declared for the Iranian People's Party, uh, which is why I got that sort of... Again, exactly the same kind of system message pop up in my info display when I was nailing those EPP sidewinders. Um, no actual combat bond being awarded. Wasn't actually getting anything for it. Although I didn't realise it at the time. It wasn't until I returned to the nearest orbital and tried to cash in my federal combat bonds that I realised I didn't have any. And while I certainly was having fun flying around, shooting up all these sidewinders and going for sightseeing trips around the federal dreadnought impeccable I wasn't actually making any money doing it in fact I was losing money hand over fist my ship had been damaged and um, you know this is costing me fuel and it wasn't until I returned to Azaban orbital and tried to cash in all of these federal combat bonds that I hadn't actually been earning that I found out I hadn't actually been earning any federal combat bonds for all my hard work and instead all I actually had was a repair bill for the whole damage that my ship had taken and uh, a refueling bill for all the fuel that I'd expended. So that was a bit of a bummer. And I resolved to find out why, so that you guys don't have to go through the same process, because most of you probably are going to go through the same process. And it's actually quite a simple solution. But once again, the game makes absolutely no effort whatsoever to show you exactly what it is you should be doing. So now that we've done it all the wrong way, Here's how you do it the right way to ensure that you actually get credit for all the kills that you achieve while you're responding to one of these federal distress signals. Target the federal distress signal, drop out of super cruise, arrive in system. Before you even start looking for targets, scroll through your systems display. You want to be looking for the functions. It took me a while to find it. It's actually right at the top. We're going to scroll up and it's as simple as this faction. Choose faction. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. That's all you have to do in order to actually start getting credits for all these kills. Of course, the second you do that, all of the enemy ships appear as red on your radar. It's not like before where I was just merrily cruising around, picking one ship at a time and taking it down without having to worry about all of his wingmen because I'd only opened fire on that one ship. I was only hostile to that ship. The second you choose a faction, any and all of the enemy ships can and will attack you. So things get a little bit more dangerous, but at least you finally start getting paid for putting your guns to work. And once you've formally declared for one side or the other, it does suddenly become a lot more immersive and fun to play as well, because you're not just cruising around picking duels with one ship at a time. 
you've got all of his wingmen to worry about as well. And by the same token, you've suddenly got all of these federal fighters, if you've declared for the Federation, backing you up. But it's not very profitable. It's fun, but it's not very profitable. Taking down sidewinders like this, you're only getting 350 credits per kill. You're never going to make a lot of money doing this. Well, that's not strictly true. You, you can earn money doing this, but at 350 credits per kill, you're not going to earn money quickly doing this. Although there is an inexhaustible supply of enemy ships. Once you've dealt with one wave, it doesn't take long before a second wave jumps in, and then you start the whole process again. Also, bear in mind, if you're playing in multiplayer mode, there could be enemy players in the region. Players like you who've jumped into this combat zone and have declared for the other side. And that adds an extra little bit of tension to the whole thing because you constantly have to have your head on a swivel and be checking your contacts in between kills just to make sure that there isn't something coloured red in the area that isn't a federal fighter or uh, an EPP sidewinder another player is going to be the biggest threat that you face in these kind of zones. You're going to be the biggest threat to them. If they have any sense, they're going to take you out first. And they will, of course, be able to claim a credit bounty for doing it because you've nominated a fight for the other side in exactly the same way as all of the NPCs. Of course, if you're playing in solo play mode, then you're going to be the only player there and you won't have to worry about that sort of thing. But if you're playing in multiplayer mode, it just adds that extra little bit of tension to the whole proceedings. So we'll just nail this one last EPP Sidewinder and then we're going to head back to Azaban Orbital and cash in my combat bonds and find out exactly how much money I made. So we dock with the Orbital, have a look at Starport Services, wait for the computer to boot up. Um, okay, well 143 credits worth of fuel, peanuts. Check the contacts. Down to the combat bond contact and fantastic. 1750 credits. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it was fun. <laughs> Not very profitable, but it was fun. I mean, compare that to the life of a bounty hunter. Cruising around the Iranian system, checking out contacts for anybody in system who's wanted in this system, spot one, closing behind him at super cruise speeds, hit him with a frame shift interdictor, drag him out of real space. Ram him on the way in. He's in a 30 ton ship. I'm in a 400 ton ship. I'm fine. His shield's just collapsed. And uh, yeah, it takes a fraction of the time doing this to earn the same amount of money. Of course, you can't do this until you've bought the equipment modules that make it possible. Anybody can jump into one of these conflict zones and have a bit of fun and earn a bit of cash. But what's the high intensity conflict zone like? Because you're not making an awful lot of money in the low intensity conflict zones at 350 credits per kill. So what's it like jumping into one of the high intensity zones? Let's find out. High intensity conflict zone selected. We're almost there. Safe disengage ready and drop into real space. Wait for my scanner to pick up some targets. I haven't actually declared for one side or the other yet. And bang, there we go. That is a lot of contacts. And those are Mark III Cobras, which is what I'm flying. Again, I need to get him in front, let my scanners work him over and ID him. So the EPP are flying Cobras. And holy shit, those are Anacondas. B wow. That is currently the biggest ship in the game that a player can own. It is bristling with rail guns and beam laser turrets. Look at that thing move. That's thousands of tons of starship. I really don't fancy my chances <laughs> in attacking one of those things. So if those are the Federation, um, I think, let me just double check this. The Cobras, where's this other Cobra? Yep, the Iran and People's Party are all flying the Cobras. I can take a Cobra, surely. All right, I'm gonna declare for the Federation. Here we go, functions, declare for the Iran and Federal Bridge. The Cobras are now all hostile. 
And this guy's shields are already getting hit. Look at that. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm probably... Yeah, I'm, there's no probably about it. I am far too far away from this guy to be doing any damage with these beam lasers. But a ship the size of a Cobra is exactly the kind of target that these heavy beam lasers were designed to take down. And Whoa! Whoa! Where did my... What is he shooting at me? Where have my shields gone? What is that? Are those rail guns? Yeah, okay, this isn't going to be quite the pushover I thought it was. I think I probably need to get out of here and come back when I'm in something like an asp. Because <laughs> I don't enjoy fair fights. <laughs> I'm still trying to divert power to my systems here and get the shields back up, which is entirely the wrong thing to do, given how quickly he took the shields down when they were at full strength in the first place. And I finally figure out, no, nah, nah, screw this. I'm getting out of here. Full power to the engines. Let's just uh, go away and come back when I'm in an asp. <laughs> because I don't like fair fights. So that was a high intensity conflict zone in Elite Dangerous. An entirely different kettle of fish to a federal distress signal or a low intensity conflict zone. I'm sure you'll agree. And I have yet to find out exactly how much you do get credited for taking down one of those cobras or God help us, one of the anacondas, but I'm willing to bet it's slightly more than 350 credits per kill. Anyway, that's it for today in Elite Dangerous. Uh, I hope you've been entertained, and hopefully I'll be able to see you all on the 16th of December when this game goes into full release. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.